off with your definition of this concept of personal disruption. Oh, great. Uh, personal disruption for the lean, for many people, has always been in relation to new business models that come into the market and disrupt the marketplace. You know, we we think of uh, your Uber, how it disrupted the taxi industry, you know, Airbnb, how it disrupted uh, the hospitality industry or how it is disrupting the hospitality industry. So a lot of people view disruption only in terms of businesses, but uh, the concept in which I bring into personal disruption is so that we can, as a people, can start viewing disruption in terms of our lives because if the marketplace keeps changing and businesses keep changing and we as a people are not changing then there is a mismatch something is not meeting somewhere so the whole idea of personal disruption is that people can start asking themselves hard questions you know like if the world is changing the world the way it is changing what is it that me as an individual needs to do to change so that i can be in alignment with where the world is going so that is really the basics of personal disruption asking yourself hard questions mm -hmm. and aligning yourself with where the world is going and just looking at your personal story just briefly share with us your journey um, i mean being retrenched from a job that was once believed to be secure but now is almost obsolete yes thank you so much uh, it's my story is a story that i am still getting used to actually and um, i back in 2016 i was still very much in the corporate world and i did not imagine this I didn't even think that retrenchment was something that could happen to me. You know, I, I used to be so naive about the whole idea. I thought that retrenchment was something that happens to all the people. So I was very much relaxed and I knew that I had a future in where I was working because I'd signed a contract, a permanent contract of employment. And so one day I went to work and my boss called me in for a meeting. And in my mind, I knew that it was just an, a, a, a meeting like it used to be just catching up and giving feedback on how things were going but at the end of that meeting i was jobless it hit me so hard that i didn't even know where to start from and my in my mind when i left work that day and the, the following weeks that continued and months i all i could do was cry you know i cried myself to sleep i i was like a walking zombie and i remember back then it became like when you buy a car then you start seeing that mark of car everywhere now that i'm retrained every time i turn on the news i will hear about retrenchment i turn on the radio i will hear about retrenchment so it became something that kept jumping on me which was something i didn't notice before so at the time i, I started asking the questions as to okay definitely i'm not the only one facing this what is it that's driving retrenchment at the rate in which is driving retrenchment now i started asking questions like how can an organization let go say 2000 employees in the space of two years or three years and they are still thriving and their productivity increases everything keeps going on perfectly well if not much better than it was when those employees were there and so these questions in my mind at the time did not make sense so i threw myself in the bed of the internet to satisfy my curiosity just to you know to research and okay what is driving retrenchment and when i saw myself into the internet at the time i only wanted to satisfy my curiosity and then words like artificial intelligence started jumping on me the fourth industrial revolution started jumping on me automation started jumping in my face you know machines robotics and all of these things at the time it sounded like chinese language but i had no clue what these terms were but the more clueless I was, the more I wanted to know more. So I kept digging. And I asked myself, okay, if there's a fourth industrial revolution, there was a third, there was a second, there was a first. And so I just went all the way and dived all the way back in. And the more I was researching, I was writing about it on social media. And the response I got from social media made me realize that this is something that a lot of people are curious about, just like me. They want to understand. And even people in the industry, the IT industry, the tech industry, well, the feedback I got gave me an idea that this is something that people really want. And I remember back then thinking to myself, I think someone needs to write a book about this. I didn't think that someone would be me because I was like, no, I don't have any background in tech. Prior to this, the only technology I knew was to make 
called on my phone, mm -hmm. worked with my laptop. That was all I like, bought at the email. Okay. Well, Nikki, will you say that? It's all according to email. Will you say that maybe um, the retrenchment process and that journey of researching about you know what the trends were that were leading companies to to figure that retrenchment was their best option of going forward and increasing automation were those some of the key factors that actually inspired you to actually um, consider reinventing yourself and speak to us then about the urgency with which people should reinvent and upskill themselves whether or not they are currently employed absolutely that was really the part that cost me to reinvent myself and at the time i didn't even realize that i was reinventing myself this thing was happening by default but as i kept going i realized that oh wow this is what is happening and i uh, i moved from writing about it on social media to starting a blog and so i started writing articles about it then it evolved from those articles into a book you know for those who don't know about the book my book is right here disrupt yourself or be disrupted and so when the book idea came out, I thought to myself, oh, what better title than Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted? Because I was very relaxed in my life. I wasn't thinking anything retrenchment. I wasn't thinking layoff. And it happened to me. So someone disrupted my life. And so people have to get comfortable with the idea of disrupting themselves. Otherwise, someone else will disrupt themselves. Then, because there is no neutral ground. You cannot bury your head in the sand and hope that this thing is going to blow over. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. The pandemic has made things worse now. So people have to be comfortable with the idea of reinvention. There are some people that they have uh, a sort of uh, tattoo, a particular industry on their forehead, and they cannot imagine themselves out of that industry. You know, they've tattooed particular job titles or professions on their forehead, and they cannot imagine moving from that particular uh, uh, profession. But the, the, the truth is that with the way technology is disrupting us, all industry, some people will have to entirely move, disrupt themselves and move from certain industries and try something completely different, something completely new. Example of accountants, you know, back in the day, accountants were the thing, you know, but right now, there are softwares that can do accounting way better than any human can. And so for those that are in that industry, you need to start thinking, should I be here? Should I reinvent myself? Should I go into consulting? Or should I go into digital marketing? Or should I go into data, you know, data science, because you still deal with numbers and things like that. So these are the kind of questions that people need to start asking themselves in order to reinvent, you know, for those that are still students, ask yourself, this certificate I'm currently posting, by the time it's completed, will it still be relevant for the marketplace? You know, the questions are uncomfortable, but if we do not ask them, disruption will happen, you will be disrupted. So when you ask yourself these questions and you realize that the course you're doing is wrong or the degree you're pursuing is wrong, then you do something about it. Then you decide, okay, what next? What do I have to do now? Because when you disrupt yourself, of course, there will be pain, but it's, it, it, you can manage that. But when someone disrupts your life, if you are not careful, you might not survive mm -hmm. from that. And I mean, your, your book is broken down into three parts. One of the parts actually deals with how and why cutting-edge technologies and um, increasing automation are actually reshaping the world of work. You mentioned the example of, of accountants, how there's actually a software that can do what an accountant used to do. So if someone finds themselves in an industry where there are softwares and technologies that are being created and invented to automate their work, how do they then keep themselves relevant? One of the ways that I recommend is that people should become curious, you know, become curious. Start asking yourself questions. What I'm doing now, which I just said, what I'm doing now, how is this still going to be relevant in the next three to five years, right? So for those that are in, and I think that tech is actually infiltrating every industry. There is no industry that technology is not going to affect. So people in whatever industry you are, just ask yourself, what I'm doing, can it? be easily done by robots can I be easily replaced by a machine you know and all of that and ask yourself if you have the right skills for now and for the future some people are waiting for their bosses to suggest courses for them to go and do to upskill themselves but that is being um that is not a good strategy 
So you ask yourself the questions. You can decide to upskill yourself on your own. By the time your company is catching up and deciding who to upskill and who to let go, you are already upskilled. You've, you've upskilled yourself in your industry. You know what new softwares are in the industry. You already familiarize yourself with those softwares that are coming into the industry and how you can use them and which ones your organization can possibly adopt so that you can be right in the front. You pivot right in the front rather than waiting for someone to hand you, you know, I say someone, we shouldn't wait for someone to hand us our future. So the mistake that a lot of people are waiting is that they are waiting for someone to suggest to them what to do, someone to tell them that this is the path you should take. But if you are, if you have a curious mind and you start asking yourself questions, you are going to find your path on your own. You are going to discover things that you otherwise would not know if you are just sitting and waiting for someone. You know, this is what I would suggest as reinvention. You don't even sound like somebody who had that devastation of, you know, being retrenched from a job that they thought was the most secure kind of job. You have this energy just bubbling through, even as you communicate. You mentioned some of the paradigm shifts a person actually needs to, to actually uh, implement to become, to thrive in this new environment. The, 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 the curiosity, uh, the, the trying to uh, upskill yourself. What about the issue as well of being able to learn from people who are younger than you? Because traditionally, the older you are, the longer you've been in a job, the more experienced you are. But with technology, it seems like the younger people know more than the older people. Absolutely, there is a mismatch there. I, I, I give example, um, this a conference that I was, uh, I think, late last year. And I gave an example of the transition that used to happen in the past, right? It's easy, it was easier for people to transition from farm workers into the retail industry, for example. So a farmer could move, someone who works in a farm could move and become a cashier you know, in, in retail. But now if retail is, is going to, at some point, become self-service where we walk in supermarkets, we pick our things and we, we catch them out ourselves. Now, how do these cashiers transition, right, to become tech savvy in different industries. The transition is not going to be so easy for all the people. Yeah, for young people, even with my kids, they know so much about technology and they play with things on my phone that each time my son plays with my phone, I will have to respect it because there's certain things with it that I don't have any clue what it did, right? So if the younger generation is uh, know these things, but with the older generation, the transition is going to be much, much more difficult. For example, the mining industry, those that are being laid off, how do they position themselves for this tech savvy world. So it's going to be difficult. Nonetheless, it's not impossible. But for people that are curious and they are not afraid of a challenge, the older generation can still become tech savvy because there is so much information on the internet, you know, that you yourself you can lock on. So much information available for free that you can learn and start learning about the basics of technology so that you can upskill yourself because you cannot really just sit back and hope that things will change. You have to do something about it. That is why the title of the book and the topic is about you disrupting yourself, right? Because a lot of us know how to disrupt the government. A lot of us know how to disrupt our organizations. But when it comes to self-disruption, people are like, no, I think that's too much. But we have it's to very right. You're just that. taking charge of your life. Nikki, we're going to have to leave it there. Nikki Absolutely. Is an author, uh, just uh, speaking to us about disrupting yourself before uh, you get disrupted and just uh, the rise of that fourth industrial revolution. Well, in the next hour, we'll bring you a wide-ranging interview.